have another speaker from from Kanafati. Hello, sir. What's going on here? Hi. Good morning, uh, Bhuvita. Good morning. Are you okay? And are you ready for having the expert uh, lecture today, Mr. Ho?
whether there is a public trust among the government or not the another thing is accountability like human being government also do mistakes so when they did mistake did they accept it or not accept it for example in india when the covid was happened government have initiated election and because of that election there are more cases happened in india so did the government or did the people of government have accept their mistake if they accept it means they are they are good people they accept their mistake and they feel that they had done a mistake so any government who accept the accountability of their work can be say it's an a good government and people start trusting them control of corruption uh, we all face this problem during the time of pandemic uh, when we have uh, injections or when we have a vaccination of covid a uh, lot of rich people take that vaccine because they have money and lot of poor people are not able to take it so that kind of corruption happened in the initial stage of vaccination so the government who can control this kind of corruption can come up as an a strong government and people start trusting them efficiency efficiency means how better they are handling the problem the covid is a problem for every government how efficiently effic efficiently they they actually control that problem like putting a lockdown giving a support to a people who are not having job doing all those things so this is one of the important factor which decided whether the government is doing the work on right time at right place that's that's the way to check the level of efficiency and last but not the least open government so when i say open government it means like talking to each other is it government taking all the decision without asking people or is it a government make any law or make any decision after asking indonesian people or indian people that this is what we want to do and take their opinion so these are the certain factor if any government who decide to build a public trust they work on transparency accountability they control the corruption they work on efficiency and they start making the open government so that is basically the first point which we talk about here public trust after that regulation okay sorry before that let me give you an idea about india and asian countries and other countries about how much their public trust their government so this is in a recent example in 2020 there are this is the status of india so the indian government lose the public trust by minus 10% which is which is very very bad as compared to other country for example the next country is thailand who lose interest and trust in their government and there is minus 1% for thailand oh sorry for indonesia so still indonesian government is doing better than indian government as term of building trust among the people so that's index shows that the indonesian government have done far better than indian government in the area of transparency in the area of efficiency or in the area of open government what steps indian government have taken when they see this they see that people are not trusting them so what they decide to do the first thing they decided to do to do every government activity online they are not going to do anything on paper so they call it e governance so in the e governance the first thing they make a website or a platform called national e governments if you open this any indian can open this website and see that what indian governments are offering in terms of services and everything is on website you can check you can complain you can give advice and suggestion so that's a way the government is trying to build the transparency among the policies second thing they had come up with an idea where the prime minister narendra modi have their own website any one in the india can open the prime minister website and write their complaint and request so if i am facing any problem in small rural area i can go to the prime minister website 
write my complaint and the prime minister office or even though sometime prime minister dr narendra modi is going to reply with a solution so that's a direct contact with the prime minister of a small people so that's a way they trying to build trust so that the number which i showed you in previous slide minus 10% can improve number third which they started with they call it e kranti e kranti is basically is an another electronic platform where they ensure that if suppose government is offering free food so i want to check whether this free food is applicable in which place either these services are actually working or not you can go to this website e kranti and you can check the efficiency transparency and reliability of such services and what cost the need to pay and last they have come up with another online platform called the national platform of indian government it is basically another single window where you can get all the information of indian government that what they are doing and what they are not doing you can see all these are reflecting what we discuss in this slide transparency accountability efficiency and open government so to improve their ranking from minus 10% to maybe plus 10% the indian government already started and initiated this e governance factor and they go with that part in the open governments there is one thing which i would like to highlight here which i am sure uh, that most of uh, the indonesian people are also facing in the covid time even though before covid or after covid there is a problem of wrong information misinformation which is floating in whatsapp facebook and people are get panic so you should understand the difference between misinformation disinformation and mal information so misinformations when i lie so suppose you ask me i am from which country so rather than telling you that i am from india i say i am from australia so i am giving you a wrong information the another was is disinformation this information is where when you ask me some information i lie to you but because of that lie there is a damage to you right so for example you ask me that what is the best way save yourself from covid problem so i'll say okay do one thing just go to mall and have a good food when you go out in a mall you have covid there so because of my lie you suffer so that problem when the uh, false informations create some kind of harm to the people is called disinformation and last that mal information which may be true but again it's going to harm you for example you ask me something i tell you the truth but after knowing that truth even though it's going to be harm you which comes under this confirmation so to solve these three problem in indian government misinformation disinformation and mal information the indian government have taken certain serious steps in law first they come up with new law called section 66 ad in that any person who is using any computer mobile tablet to give a false information to the people they have a fine of 1 lakh rupees which is indian rupees and 3 years of jail so uh, under this section if anyone can share the false information which harms people they have a strong things another which is coming with section 58 that is basically if you share any information due to which people are getting in panic like if i share information that in next city there is you know lot of pandemic case are coming due to which people are get panic so if i fall do this kind of informations and people are get panic i will be registered under section 54 and again it's a very very high level of punishment people are getting in india number third the ipc act 153a is again if i say anything bad on social media about the religion so basically to save the religion of a people if i say suppose bad word about that the uh, this covid is spreading because of uh, hindu religion or because of muslim religion so i am going to police will catch me under ipc act and they give me a serious punishment because i misuse the religion for the false information and last it's called defamation 
uh, uh, that I I published a wrong data on social media and showing that uh, in India there are one lakh people are dying in every day without having any facts and figure. I will be registered under this law. So to solve the problem of wrong information, Indian government have come up with strong law to save the rights of a good people. Number third, which we discussed about here. Um, Let me go back. Sorry, Mr. Rahul. Is there any black, uh, black block in your PPT? Is it uh, close your black PPT? Block. Yeah. Yeah, I have. Is it a problem? Some cover uh, your writing. This one. Just hold on. I'll, 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 I'm just going back. Okay. Okay, it's slightly slow, I think. Okay, so did you remember in, in this uh, website we are talking about what is a good government? Public trust, regulation, and management. So in public trust, I discuss about how Indian government is trying to get public trust so that they can be a good government. How they did? They come up with a lot of online platform. Regulation, they come up with the new law, new hukum to solve the problem. And number three is management. So let us see what are the management thing happened. Is it my screen still is not moving or is it not? Bhuvita is because I can see my screen is not moving, but I already. Yes, uh, we, have, uh, we have, it is moving. But management, it's moving, yeah. right? You can see yeah. management, right? Yeah. So the last thing which Indian government is trying to do for better management during the time of pandemic, the first thing which they do that they make their own vaccination. They have not brought uh, a vaccination from anyone. They, along with Oxford Zeneca, they come up with new vaccine, which helps Indian as well as the neighboring country like we India have given the vaccination to Malaysia, even in even uh, Myanmar, Nepal and other countries or even though in Sri Lanka. Uh, the other thing which Indian government have do first they develop the vaccination and they give free vaccination to all people. Remember, I'm talking about management, how to manage the problem. So see how Indian government is trying to manage the pandemic problem first to develop vaccine, second, to give free vaccine to all people. Please remember, Indian population is very big like Indonesia. It's very hard to give free vaccination to all people. It's a big loss for a government. But still, they are giving free vaccination because it's very important. Number three, they come up with a lot of free packages for India. Indian people like, if you are a woman, and an old woman, you don't have anybody to support you. The Indian government will give you every month money so that you can buy food and other things. If you are old and there is nobody to support you, the Indian government will give you money so, you know, so that you, you will not face problem during the time of pandemic. If you are a farmer, you, are, you, are, you don't have any crops. You, your crops is damaged because of you know, any problem. Again, the Indian government will give you free of cost money and support so that you can do your farming. Similarly for workers, similarly for employees and even though normal people like uh, people like us, if you are taking in a, a gas or a petrol, there, there is a subsidy during the time of pandemic. So what government is trying? Because in pandemic, people are not having money to support them giving them money so that they can survive this pandemic. So that is a part of management which government was doing. The other thing which they do that first, give food to most of the people free of cost for at least four, four and a half months. Again, I am telling you, Indo like Indonesia, Indian population is very big. To give a free food to a people is like a very big challenge. But the Indian government have decided to give a free food for almost everybody, which includes grains, rice, and as well as pulses. And last, to motivate people, they initiated a lot of challenges where they said, bring the solution for COVID. We will give you more money as an 
entrepreneur or innovation cell so a lot of people have won lot of money by giving advice to the government so in whole what government is trying to do they are trying to manage the problem and telling people that we are good governance we can manage problem you can trust us so these are the three problem where uh, area where indian government have worked and at the same time trying to show indian people that we are good government you can trust us now go back to the problem like which i asked you before starting this presentation that what are the three major problem indonesia face during the time of pandemic so anyone can tell me three major problem which indonesia has faced buvita anyone what are the three big problem okay, you face uh, uh, the participant uh, said to mr rahul what kind of problem uh, faced for indonesian during this pandemic um, maybe i will say one problem mr rahul Uh, yeah. I think uh, the public policy to the government is still not uh, not maximum, yeah. Since so there are, uh, we often receive uh, some misinformation or some uh, what's like a uh, disinformation, yeah, about the government. For example, the vaccine. Uh, the government always uh, give us a vaccine, but some of people say that the content of vaccine is not vaccine, but it is only water and it is not uh, uh, has a, a full function for. Avoiding the COVID like this, so it is yeah. make us that sometimes. Is, uh, that is comes under misinformation when you are giving a wrong information, which create a problem in the people. What yeah. other problem Indonesia students? What problem you are facing? You all are students. What problem you face in pandemic? You tell me, then I'll tell you what how Indian government and other governments are doing. Okay, the audience, the student. What do you feel for the pandemic? Uh, problem related with the education maybe yeah so if you are a student i am sure most of you people are faced you cannot go okay. to university right edwin what kind of problem edwin is edwin is sharing something yeah edwin raise the hand yeah edwin edwin please tell me you are muted edwin you can we cannot hear you edwin <laughs> You still muted? What's problem, Edwin? Oh, uh, Edwin unmuted because Pak Rio, okay, Pak Rio, maybe okay. you can. Yeah, okay. Okay, already. Uh, I think some problem from for a student is we. Find some difficult to learn together because of this pandemic. We study online. We can, uh, like say, we can meet with friends and discuss about uh study and etc. Yes, Edwin, and that's that's a very very. genuine problem faced by every students during covid universities were closed you cannot go university everything is online maybe in your home there is no wifi there is no internet you are facing problem to attend online classes so that is an, another problem which you face similarly like india what indian people face during the time of covid first of all shortage of medical services people are sick there is no vaccine there is no oxygen there is no hospital beds people are lying on roads people are lying on floors or sometime in their car and home so the first problem which indian government face during the time of covid is healthcare right so when i say just give me a moment when i say healthcare let us see what healthcare shortage means all about covid-19 has ravaged healthcare systems the world over even countries with supposedly robust healthcare services have been reported as close to collapse collapse it's a term we've heard a lot conjuring up imagery of victims with no help to turn to hospitals with no beds staff with no equipment 
but different people mean different things when they say a healthcare system has collapsed. So collapse is not necessarily a term we would use outside the humanitarian setting. So we would say, for example, that the health systems in Syria or Yemen have collapsed. If I were to put it in layman's terms, I would say that collapse really referred to the inability of the health system to be able to respond to a crisis like COVID and is not able to meet the needs of people that they serve. That ability has been jeopardized throughout the pandemic, with regular headlines describing healthcare systems struggling to meet the needs of the populace. October 2020, teenage healthcare students are recruited to assist frontline staff in the Czech Republic. December, across the US, 200 hospitals have run out of ICU beds. A third of all hospital ICUs are at 90% capacity or higher. January 2021, the Brazilian city of Manaus ran out of oxygen, key treatment for severe COVID sufferers with deadly consequences. March, France uses specially equipped trains to move severe COVID patients from overwhelmed hospitals to those in less affected areas. The issue with COVID-19 is that it has affected every part of the global healthcare system. In at least some parts of nearly every country, at some point, there has been a scramble for supplies and shortages in PPE and vaccines. Infections among frontline workers have added to the strain. When there's a sudden shock, as in a pandemic, not all parts of the healthcare system are affected equally. It doesn't actually look like acute care services was where the hit has been the hardest. It's actually more in um, particularly chronic disease services. In mid-2020, the WHO did a survey of national healthcare systems across the world. They found that healthcare in many places suffered strong disruptions in services such as routine immunization and family planning as the virus spread. There was a decline of 21% in TB care just between 2019 and 2020, owing to the pandemic. Something like 12 million women experienced disruption in family planning services, resulting in millions of unintended pregnancies. Imagine our bodies when they're cold. They'll divert blood away from the less essential extremities to protect its core. This is what can happen when a healthcare system is put under pressure, focusing resources towards the urgent need. It's a fluid process. We've seen on the media the images of overflowing hospitals, perhaps in, in popular terms, but what to me it doesn't really um, capture is the continual adaptation and response that's going on amongst health systems. WHO report also found the number one reason for services being disrupted wasn't staff being reassigned to help tackle COVID, but patients not showing up. One of the things we've seen from COVID is people are afraid of accessing health services. They're worried about catching the virus there, so the word collapse may just add to people's fear. Few things tax the global healthcare system and supply chain like a pandemic. And there were early warning signs that the system would struggle to cope. The Ebola epidemic that began in 2014 killed over 11,000 people across West Africa. It revealed glaring inadequacies in global healthcare response, but experts say some of its lessons went unlearned. The big lesson from COVID is we need to invest in health systems. It can't be seen as a cost. And without that, we will not be prepared to deal with a multitude of crises. Uh, the climate crisis, for one, it's global. It doesn't respect borders. I mean, the health system is the front line of a country in any crisis. So it needs to be prioritized in terms of investment. So in, in that short video, I was just trying to show you that the healthcare system was one of the major problem that public administration faced during the time of COVID. When, when the problem happened, not in, in India, all over the world, the complete hospitals were full, there is no oxygen, there is no medicine. So this is, was the one problem which Indian government also faced while, while the COVID comes. The second most important problem, I'm sure you all are agree with me, is the economy. The country economy reached to very low level. For example, in India, our economy was somewhere around close to 6% when the COVID hit. And in the mid of the COVID, we were minus uh, somewhere around 23%. So when the GDP, that is gross domestic product, goes down, 
that means the people are not having money to buy food and services so that was a, another biggest problem in front of especially uh, in india number 1 is the healthcare system and number 2 is the economy what is number 3 which just advin told us education system the education system was in india was not meant for online classes but as the covid hit everybody was gone for online and they realized they don't have internet in their home they don't have good mobile phones they don't have data so how they are going to attend classes every day so that's the another third important problem which indian public government faced while this pandemic hit i am sure you again agree in indonesia or india during the time of people lot of people lose their job because the hotels are closed the people who are working in hospitality they lose their job the people who are sort of unemployed during the time of pandemic for especially for india during the time we have a security issue with china we have a border fight with china which creates another problem for indians first we are facing covid there is a problem of medicals in all over the country the economy is very low the education systems are struggling there is no job for the people and at the same time in border there is a fight happening with china so this is the another important challenge indians face while during the time of pandemic and last you have seen the people the local people are losing trust on government they don't believe that whatever the steps government are taking are good for them so these are the challenges the public administration was facing while the pandemic if you see this problem you can find maybe uh, healthcare economy education unemployment are the same problem faced in indonesia and other countries also so do you do you think that how indonesian government have solved this problem or solving this problem i can share my experience with that how indian government is trying to solve all these six problems one by one let's start with the first one that's called healthcare we know that we have a big population lot of people are sick they need vaccination they need uh, healthcare systems and all so the first thing indian government have did that they have increased the health budget earlier they decide they will give only this budget for the healthcare system but in during the time of covid they decided and they improved this budget almost more than 100 times so rather than giving them 94452 uh, it's in of course in crore rupees uh, they they start giving more than almost 200 110% hike on the budget so that we can build new hospital we can hire more medical people to support indian people and you know make health industry strong another thing which they do that they give all the hospital facilities online for example you you are somebody in your family get sick so rather than going hospital you can talk to the doctor on mobile through video call the video through video call you can order your medicine the medicine people will directly come to your home if you know if you want oxygen in online mode you can order the oxygen rather than going to hospital they give every facilities to your home so that's a way they what they did they try to control this pandemic and support the healthcare system another important thing which they do they call it a scheme called ayushman bharat so what happened in under this for example i am a i am a poor person maybe i i work in a mall i lose my job i don't have job i get sick by covid i don't have money to pay a heavy bill to hospital so i have this card called ayushman card i can go to any government hospital i can show this card and they will give 5 lakh rupees as a free treatment to me so i can admit there i can take medicine i can take oxygen and i don't need to pay anything no money so that's a way it's called medical card which is given to the poor people so that they can get the healthcare system some other point which they did like uh they they improve more private hospitals so that there are a lot of facilities for this you know people 
they increase budget they develop vaccination and and lot of other things in terms of financial and non financial support to the healthcare system so that is a way the indian government trying to solve the first challenge that is healthcare what was the second challenge economy so to support indian economy come back and people start getting job the first step indian government have did this they changed the industrial policy so there used to be an old industrial policy which is very hard very strict they make it very easy for a people if somebody wants to start some form of you know uh, business or some form of things they can start with the flexible policy so that's under that flexible policy what they see for example now i want to start my own university earlier it is very hard i need to take lot of permissions i should have lot of money under this step i can easily get university license and i can open my own university there is always a freedom of import technology for example i found kadri university is having lot of good technology which they are using so i can directly request kadri university to share with me in india so that's a way indian government have tried to make the business easy so that the economy can go up another thing which they do earlier india is having lot of public offices public offices means that government offices and we all know that the government offices generally don't bring profits they are only a business people who are working but they are not bringing profit so government of india decided to sell the government office or merge the government offices and save the money so that they can improve their economy for example we used to have lot of public banks so rather than 10 public banks the government have merged all the banks or make it two only so that's a way they save money and they use that money to improve the economy of a country and last which indonesian government is also trying free entry for foreign investment but we call it fdi foreign direct investment so now the indian government have opened their market anyone from outside of india if they want to do any business they are most welcome government will give lot of subsidy lot of benefit to the international people so because when they come and they they do business in india the economy will increase so these are the step indian government is taking and there are some others like new trade policy if you are a student of international relations you know there is a fees which you need to pay when you are selling and buying a product from another country so for example if you want to buy an iphone from us you need to pay a custom duty right so the custom duty comes under trade policies and all so the indian government have also trying to reduce the trade policy so that there should be a more money flow in the economy and some other taxes on import and export so i i just show you that how indian government is trying to solve the problem of healthcare industry the second how the indian government is trying to improve the economy so that they can solve the second challenges number third problem what was there education which i think uh, one of admin is also told about so to solve this problem the first thing which i know myself that lot of indonesian governments are also trying we started with diksha diksha is basically uh, it's an online platform where uh, you know uh, the teacher the faculty members and and the student come together and they can learn through uh maybe maybe video chat and through whatsapp or through maybe zoom call that is an a platform which indian government have developed so that the poor people who are struggling to come you know uh, to get an education they can use this application at the same time indian government have also started a tv channel so like there are a lot of channels in a tv there is one special channel which is dedicated for first to 12th class so the teacher is coming like you see a serial and movie they will tell you in that tv that what are the course and they will teach you right another thing which they comes with radio and community radio podcast so the people who are blind they cannot see tv so for them there is a special channel in radio which is going all over the day about different courses so the student can log into the radio and they can listen 
so that's a way if the people are not having internet they can solve their problem the indian government also try and make it mandatory that at least 100 universities in india run absolutely online so the people who are struggling during the crime of covid they can attend their classes online remember before covid indian university use not used to give online classes so within one year the indian government have allowed all the university to run online classes and add online content in their program and that's that's a way by doing lot of things they are trying to do and solve this problem of education what important thing for me they did especially good they call it manodarpan uh, manodarpan is basically an, an activity like lot of students who are sitting in home from last one years or a parents or a teacher who are teaching continuously online they have psychological pressure and sometimes they feel depressed so there is an a special program run by the doctors to motivate students faculty members and the faculty members that how to control the psychology and be happy in your life so that is one of the important program which i am not sure indonesia have run right now or not but that i personally like this program a lot because lot of people feel depression during the time of covid so that's a way we saw we are trying to solve our third problem which is education now the biggest problem which i am going to talk about is unemployment how to get jobs right and i am sure that the same problem indonesia is also so what the government has started they started they call it pradhan mantri or mahatma gandhi yojana this yojana or this scheme is only for a people who are not educated for example in indonesia on jakarta there are a lot of people put small stall and making food you know they sell their food they are not educated because of covid they cannot put their shop on the road so what they will do they will die with hunger so the similarly in india people we have lot of people like this so indian government have started a program called mahatma gandhi yojana in which anyone who is not educated they can be a part of government projects like they can they can start making a uh, lot of things in rural area roads and all and the government will pay them money so that at least they can have money for their food and shelter the another thing which indian government started called mudra under this scheme what indian government is trying to do any student anyone who wants to start business during the time of covid they will get at least 10 lakh rupees with almost 0% of interest so that they can start their own business so by supporting the entrepreneurship the government is ready to give lot of money to the people number third you are educated but you are good on technical skills like you are very good on making uh, paintings you are very good on making something which is handmade so government start startup india project so that if you are good in something you show your work to indian government and they will help you to make your office and you know start your business they give you money they give you expertise they give you space and that's a way you can start your own business and you can give job to other people also so in short the government have initiated lot of things and telling people that don't look for job be a businessman be an entrepreneur and generate more jobs in the country so that's the way government is trying they have not completed they are trying to solve the problem of unemployment last which is might be not interesting for you the border dispute which is was happening with india and china so the indian government and chinese government are having a lot of talk on the border to solve the problem without war so that's that's the another way which indian public administration is trying to solve the problem last which we talk about trust that lot of indian people are losing trust on indian government so what steps they are taking to regain that trust they bring the new law called right to information it's called rti so what is this rti i tell you for example uh i am i want to know that how much money government have pay to build the vaccine for covid right if i go to the government office nobody will give me that information they will say that why should i give that information for you 
so under this law i will file a small application saying that under the law of rti i want to know the details that how many money indian government have invest for making indian vaccine now it is mandatory for a office or a management or a government to answer my query and it should be very truthful they cannot lie so that's the way what we bring transparency so if i have a information what government what uvita said that lot of people are saying that the vaccine is only having water so if i have the same problem i can write an application under rti to the government that i heard the vaccine is having only water please tell me what is the answer so the government of health industry need to answer my question with truthful they cannot lie and that's the way the transparency come and trust comes the another thing which they come up with e kranti which i discussed early if government is making any law policy it should be online with complete detail so that anyone can read understand and complain if they have right so with this what was the last four five six problem which indian government was facing that was healthcare i told you how the healthcare system india is trying to make it correct economy how the economy trying to boost education how the education system in india is trying to get it done unemployment and job losses how the government is motivating people to being entrepreneur and giving them lot of money to start their own business national securities india is in a talk with china to solve the border dispute and trust by bringing the new kind of law where the everyone have a right to get proper information about government policies so with this note i'll and this topic here but before moving to the end section i would like to give you an a small glimpse about my university and i am sure that in coming year we would like to invite a group of student and professor from your university to visit our university for maybe for uh, two week or one month so that's a small video about my university please allow me to run this video With over 4,000 students from all over India, five institutes of academic disciplines offering courses in design, business, law, dentistry, liberal arts, and mass communication. 1,000 employees and a sprawling 30-acre campus, Karnavati University is fast becoming synonymous to excellence in teaching, learning, and research. Located in the World Heritage City of Ahmedabad, Karnavati University endorses a strong sense of openness and warmth. The cornerstone of our academic philosophy is rigor. We know that we are preparing our students not just for a career but life itself. A multi-dimensional learning model drives all academic activities at the university. The university is young, vibrant and offers the best learning ambience to nurture academic, entrepreneurial and professional excellence. Welcome to Karnavati University. At Karnavati University, we believe in challenging the impossible. At Karnavati University, we believe in challenging your extremes because at Karnavati University, we have the passion for education. We reinforce confidence in our students by providing them with opportunities to learn through various activities which go give them a holistic approach to life and educational growth.
Karnavati School of Dentistry. In order to meet the growing demand for dental education in India, the institutional block of KSD is facilitated with appropriate learning centers, laboratories and museums. The rich and high-tech library keeps the doors of knowledge open for the students 24 by 7. At the OPD, students are trained in skill and professionalism under the guidance of the experts in the field. Karnavati School of Dentistry is well known for its academics, infrastructure as well as for discipline not only in Gujarat but all over the India. We pull the students to reach to the next level by giving one-to-one -one interaction and we teach them the next generation methodology so that they can walk out tomorrow as a dentist and they can conquer the future pretty well in this competitive market. Spending seven hours a day here has made me fall in love with this beautiful campus. In this three years span of clinical experience, I have witnessed varying kinds of patients. As a student, everyone dreams about their college life and I'm totally living this dream. The flow of the patient here is amazing and it has accentuated my skills to the most. The MBA Institute has strategically devised UG and PG courses and is committed to providing business students with the high quality management skills necessary to operate and perform in a global environment. Guest lecturers from academic celebrities, expert faculties and a real world exposure gives the United World School of Business an edge over other business schools. The add-on life skill modules which are given in all our programs like leadership skills, networking skills, negotiation skills and team building skills. An important feature of our curriculum is the string of courses on contemporary business environment. This uh, enables us to bring to the classroom things from the world of business and industry even as they are unfolding in real time. The Indian economy is booming and I want to ride this wave. I chose United World School of Business because they provide a unique perspective to watch entrepreneurship and my risk-taking abilities are getting sharpened here. I am keen to know that how human resources will impact the companies and the business and at United World School of Business our veteran teachers share their rich experiences with us. United World Institute of Design One of the premier design institutes in India the United World Institute of Design offers a diverse range of UG and PG courses in the area of art and design. Through carefully designed sessions, the Institute enables an environment of cross-disciplinary collaboration and advocates both specialized practice and hybrid experimentation. UID is the fastest growing design institute in India. We have got students throughout the country and they are studying together different disciplines in the field of design. Through our faculty and our students, the processes, the academic systems, which are benchmarked to the best in the world, in a very short span, UID has become one of the most sought after design colleges in India. At the United School of Design, we believe in creating the new student for the future of tomorrow who will contribute not only to the society but will be able to be a part of an evolving process. So UID is so good as a college that when you leave after a course of four years or two years, you leave as a complete and an independent person. I believe there's a life beyond a classroom uh, and lifestyle accessory department at UID. Uh, industrial visits, visit to trade fairs, it is important as it gives a broader perspective of how the industry functions and how the work flows. Here at UID we have people from all over the country. This gives us an amazing platform to organize events and celebrate festivals. Right from Navratri to Durga Puja and Ganpati to Onam, we celebrate it all. Recognized by the Bar Council of India, the School of Law is functioning as a nodal agency to uplift legal education in Gujarat. An effective advocacy program, an in-house legal aid clinic exposing students to hands-on experience, 
and a faculty of renowned legal scholars and practitioners ensured that the students learn both inside and outside of the classroom. The question which many of the students are contemplating at this time is to how do you go about choosing a law school? It is my confession that students should choose law school based on faculty, based on uh, interaction that the law school would provide. And I think increasingly law schools and law students are emphasizing the need of skills. We have a very thriving research department here where students and faculty, they can engage in different types of legal as well as interdisciplinary legal research including human rights, child rights, cyber law, IPR. There are very less women in the field of criminal prosecution, so I want to change that. And there are many things that I'm learning in the United World School of Law. I had an interest in looking towards criminal law and practicing it. Learning here from trained professionals at United World School of Law is awesome. The liberal arts curriculum will challenge you for the rest of your life. The courses ensure intellectual and personal growth, thus preparing students to meet the challenges of responsible citizenship in a complex, changing world. An emphasis on writing in all disciplines offered sharpens students' capacity for critical thinking and expression. The world is changing so fast that and the communication is one of the reasons why it has changed so fast. This course are becoming more and more exciting for the younger people. And we make it very, very relevant today with the up-to-date developments of all the courses of communication, be it television, be it cinema, be it uh, the cyber media, be it the print. And we make them study in convergence. We incorporate theatre, dance and music in our liberal arts program. We are also committed to creating strong linguistic and reasoning skills in our students. I always wanted to build a career in archaeology. So by studying in the United World School of Liberal Arts, I am getting an opportunity to study archaeology both in a theoretical as well as practical way. Through a wide variety and range of performing arts at the campus, I am actually getting a chance to explore my creativity. At Karnavati University, the safety and well-being of our students, faculty and staff is an important priority. Our campuses and their environs are safe and through a variety of measures both on and off campus. Security on campus takes a number of forms. A 24 by 7 control center, CCTV cameras all over the campus, and fire detection and safety alarms are the security measures that we implement. Karnavati University offers comprehensive health care for the entire campus community with a team of medical professionals including a round-the-clock gynac and a general physician. The 10 bedded hospital in the campus of the university is equipped to handle various emergencies. There are two food outlets on campus, the mess and the popular other canteen called Anticlock. With no compromise on hygiene and nutrition value of the food, both the spaces ensure that the students can relax and socialize with friends or work while cozying up to a hot cup of chai. The, we try to give a homely touch so that they don't miss their home a lot. Also, we, the food is prepared in a very hygienic way and cleanliness is maintained throughout. Also, if somebody is ill, they can ask us and we will prepare a special healthy food for them. Whether a recreational novice or an accomplished varsity athlete, students of Karnavati University stay active, engaged and healthy. Our facilities include a gym, a sports ground for football and cricket, and a basketball court. Each college building radiates the poise and character of the stream of education it imparts. 
seamlessly nestled alongside each other. These buildings are beautifully fused together with white lily ponds, sculptures, murals and various art installations. Karnavati University, the campus has everything. It has a pond, a football ground, a stationery shop, a cafeteria, a hostel, workshops. It has everything that you can ask for. I've been living in this hostel since a year now. Here I don't have two, three, but 350 family members and it feels like a second home here. Karnavati University is where opportunity waits. We get these amazing chances to work with renowned fashion designers and labels. This is where we make memories. This is where we make mistakes and we learn. This is where we grow. Welcome to Karnavati University. Thank you very much for patiently watching this long video, but I'm sure that now you have some idea about the, the institution we have and the programs we are running. And I personally would like to invite you all, whenever you have time and you are visiting India, be our guest, visit us for a short or a long term program. Thank you very much. And I'm very happy to answer if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Rahul, for your nice presentation and also nice video, yeah, for uh, making us know about Kanavati University because uh, we have uh, some program that maybe uh, someday we can go there for uh, visiting Kanavati University. Okay, uh, so far we have uh, six persons, six participants who asked the question. I will start from the lady first, yeah, from Adinta Miftahul Hidayati. So, uh, please, Adinta. Uh, Ask the question to Mr. Rahul. Uh, Pak Rio, can you uh, unmute Mr. Pak Rio? Yeah, yeah. Okay, speak, please. Up. Okay. Uh, hello, Mr. You are muted again, I think, Ardita. Ardita. Uh, Pak Rio, can you have Ardita? You unmute. Okay, we skip first because uh, can you speak, Adinda? Okay, hello, Mr. Rahul. Hello, Ardita, how are you? Okay, my introduce is Michael. My name is Ardita, I'm from pharmacy. And have, I have one question to you. Uh, how do we deal with people who have not been vaccinated? For some reason, this reason is sick or high blood pressure and another. So they be isolated or demystic. Because we hear people who have not been vaccinated can go anywhere and it's different. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Ardita, you are from uh, you know, the background of medical. I hope you understand one thing. To develop a vaccine in general, there are they, that need four to five years time. Why I'm saying that to develop a vaccine, it takes five years because they do the trials. So this vaccine is not gone through with proper trials, whether it's an Indian vaccine or a Pfizer or it's because of the COVID, the vaccine was developed in very hurry. They have not checked this vaccine drawbacks with the people who have uh, maybe uh, the problem like tuberculosis and as you say, uh, high blood pressure or, or maybe they have a problem of bronchitis, right? They have not checked the vaccine drawbacks to the pregnant woman. They have not checked the drawbacks of vaccine where if somebody is taking another vaccine. For example, if you have a blood cancer and you are having a blood, blood transplant, can you take that vaccine or not? So it's very unfortunate right now that this vaccine, because it's not gone through with the proper four to five year duration of the trials. The vaccine was developed in some time within 11 to 10 or maybe one year. It is not sufficient to answer all the problems which is going to face if you're going to take that vaccine. That's the one part from the medical side. The another 
part which you need to understand if you are talking about the public administration here there is one board called vaccine diplomacy now the go now the different government are using vaccine as an a part of diplomacy of doing business with the other country right so for example <clears throat> there is an ex country who is saying that if you want to come to my country you need to have this particular vaccine from particular country or particular company then only you can come so what is this this is not an a vaccine this is called vaccine diplomacy you are promoting that company or you know that company is going to get a big profit and that profit is going to share between different people so we while we talking about uh, the international or a social political point of view this vaccine is getting into different direction which we called it vaccine diplomacy but we if we see from the medical point of view i must be very very truthful with you by saying that this is a trial and error method which most of the countries are using nobody is having a clear research data which shows that if you have this vaccine you are 100% sure or 90% sure nobody is having the sure data with them saying that if you are not going to have vaccine you will get die right so that research data is not enough because as i say the trial has not been done so these are the two different question i have answered you in a two different way whatever the way uh, you like to take the answer you can go ahead i hope i am able to answer your question arthi thank you very much are you satisfied arita are you happy with this sir uh, rahul question and uh, answer okay thank you next question from mr jatniko please ask the question mr jatniko you still unmute you still unmute mr jatniko Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for question, Mrs. Rita, and nice to see you again, Mr. Rahul. How are you today? Hello, Mr. Okay. Rahul. Can you hear my voice? Yeah, I can Hello? hear you. Thank you very Rita? much. Can you hear yeah. my voice? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but please ask a question. Okay, Mr. Rahul. Mr. Rahul. Uh, actually, I'm interested in your slide show and you talk about the public trust and it is make me so interested to joining this uh, seminar and you said about the corruption and based on my opinion, um, public trust, this is uh, related about the good governance and good governance is essential from free from the abuse and corruption and it has the good self uh, safety for the public and with the to recover from the rule of the law so actually in this, in this section i have the two question mr mr Rahul, and it is this question related it's arthur it's okay mr Rahul, if i have the two questions yeah yeah please please okay <laughs> in the first Actually, I would like to, like to know what are the methods used in your country to detect and study position abuse, corruption, and financial fraud uh, in active in the public administration. I think this is just your in your uh, your method in your uh, country, uh, Mr. Rahul. And then second, what are the main qualities a good government to be free from the position abuse? And the cop, uh, the corruption. I think this is based your experience, based on your point of uh, point of view about the good government. I think enough. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Professor, for asking these two questions. And I I try to be very very truthful so that I can uh, create a trust among you and us. So in India, first of all, uh, there are a lot of things Indian government is trying in terms of bringing uh, law, bringing uh, transparency in the policy. But on ground, it is very hard. You need to understand that uh, removing corruption is almost like, uh, you know, is an impossible task in especially country like India or maybe a country which is developing. The reason behind it, why? we say that it is very hard in developing country i give you an example of india india was 
ruled by Britishers 100 years, almost 9900 years, right? So what happened? Uh, they take all the wealth, all the money India is having to their country. Then India become a poor country. So there is a psychology which say that, that any human being have only three needs to survive. Food, shelter, right? And, and the place to live. So every human being in this planet fight for three things to get a proper food, to get a place to live and you know, and they, the proper, proper things for that. So when India get independence, people are very poor. They don't have money to have food. They don't have their house. They don't have facility to provide their kids. So they use the shortcut method that's called corruption, right? To give a false commitment, to do a false thing, getting money and completing their basic needs. That's the where the corruption start coming in the developing countries like India and other, right? So it takes almost 70 years of independence. The corruption is going on in government and public sector. There is no magic vaccination that in one year government can give to the people and corruption can go out. But yes, slowly and gradually when the country's people are educating and the new generation are more serious about this problem, a lot of people are afraid to do corruption because they know there is a very strong law. If you do corruption, you have to go to jail. If you do corruption, people will boycott you from the society. They will not allow you to sit and you know, talk to them. So that's the way which is happening in India right now. But on ground, I tell you, still there are a lot of corruption in India and it will take maybe another one decade, 10 years, where we can say that we are able to reduce the percentage <coughs> of corruption. And I, I think it's not only in India, if you go to any part of the world, things are happening, right? So uh, in, in a philosophical world, I say that if there is a God, there is an evil, right? So if there are a good people, there must be a bad people in this planet. So the bad people do the bad thing in which corruption is one thing. So there isn't a fight between good and bad. And I am hope sure that one day the good people will won this battle and the corruption will slowly and gradually will remove from the Indian public sector. Right now we are improving, but yeah, it will take a lot of more time. Thank you, Park. I think I am able to answer under my capacity. It's okay, Fajar. Are you happy with Mr. Rahul's answer? Okay, I think it's okay because that's why I can compare yeah. what. Uh, Be careful. India and Corruption means yeah. jail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. okay thank you. Thank you. Okay, next next question from Mr. Donny. Okay, please, Donny, ask a question. Donny. Donny? Yeah. You still unmute? Yeah, please ask a question. Mr. Anmir. Hello, Mr. Rahul. Hi, Mr. Doni. How are you? Introduce me, Doni Pratama, from the Public Administration Study Program, Kadir University. I want to ask a question. How is the role of government when they face disobedient people during pandemic? Thank you, Mr. Rahul. Um, Mr. Doni, your voice is very low. I cannot hear your question properly. What is the role of government? Repeat once again, Johnny. Can you repeat your question, please? Repeat your question. Repeat. Repeat. How is the role of government when they face disobedient people during during pandemic? Okay. So oh. if I if I understood correctly, you are want to ask what is the role of Indian government during the time of pandemic, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, anyway, I have given a complete presentation on that. But just to answer your question, I tell you that Indian government is trying all the measures to support the local people. But unfortunately, right now, the biggest challenge for India is not a pandemic. The biggest challenge, which we said, 
which comes because of pandemic is unemployment and the 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 economy is very down right and the same time we are facing a small fights on indian border with especially with china so these are the three major problem which indian government are facing right now and they are trying their level best to solve this problem for unemployment government is saying to all university student even even though to the young people that don't think about job don't think you will graduate and get a job in a company think like this you graduate and start your own business so the student asks okay i want to start my own business but where is the money i don't have money i don't have expert who can help me so the indian government is saying okay if you want to start your own business we will give you money we will give you expert from different part who will help you to start your business and that's the way you not only getting job for yourself you will bring more job for the people so that's the way they are trying to solve the unemployment challenge so they are doing their level best but a country like indonesia china india or especially indonesia and india i must say that we have a big population to do anything it's a big challenge we are not a small country like uh, finland or maybe ireland where there are a, or a new zealand they are the population is very low if you want to do something you can do it in one month a country which is having 1.4 billion people if you want to give them even though a single food in one time it's it's a big big activity so that's what the indian government is trying going slowly motivating people trying to change the mind of a people so that together we can come up and solve this problem yeah tony thank you sir ho next question from purahma uh, purahma please Okay. Thank you, Ms. Kita. Hi, Mr. Rahul. Hello, Boo. How are you? Fine. My name is Rahma Kusuma Devi. I'm from Professional Middle Ferry Department. From your slide, so I see 85% university student in India first learning loss due to COVID. Is it true? Absolutely. Uh, my question is the. Uh, how to government policy to offer come education in pandemic covid and so, second question is yeah. it now at the university that is has started face to face meeting thank you mr rahul thank you boo and it's really nice to meet you online even though yeah so uh, boo it's absolutely correct data that when the pandemic hit right i if i am correct because i have spent 16 years in universities no universities in india have infrastructure support or technology to run online class there are a lot of university in india where the professor don't know how to do zoom or how to do online talk they are afraid of camera even so when the pandemic happened and suddenly every university is closed government give us order do it everything online and the management of university don't know how to do that they said we don't have infrastructure we don't have technology my student is not having laptop my student is not having internet in their home how could we do that the government said no university will not open whatever you do you do it online so that's the way 85% students are not having any class they are just sitting talking to the phone to their professor and taking notes and that's a big loss for india in terms of because we have a big population of students here almost if i'm correct 9000 universities right so but it takes 3 or 4 month when people realize that they have to change so initially like i am from one university my owner of this university start giving us laptop giving us training how to do a uh, zoom right and the same way they start giving support to the student like i remember even though in indonesia you start giving subscription to the student pre internet so that they can attend class so similarly the indian people are also started the same thing 
telling students to buy subscription and the college will refund them the money. They also try to say, okay, we do one thing. We have a big ground. We will give a free internet in that big ground. You can come in that ground, sitting very far to each other and use internet to talk to your professor. So they bring a lot of different way. The, the most uh, good way which a lot of uh, rural people are benefit by radio, not by TV. Because remember, a lot of rural people are not having TV even though. So what they do, they start radio channels. A special channel, suppose, for management student at 5 o'clock, two hour on economics, right? By, by a, one of the good professor of different universities. So that's a way student can write and then they put their questions on email and send it to that professor. So that's a way they try to solve it. Fortunate by the grace of God, right now from last February, everything is open. I am sitting in my university. All my students are in campus. All my professors are in campus. Everything is physical and uh, there's no cases. So we are very happy. We feel like normal now. And that's why we are very excited to host your student and people, but that's unfortunate. Still, the Indonesian government have not opened the borders. So India is normal. Uh, we learned from our mistake, but still we are doing the same. 20, 25% of curriculum going to be online, whether it's normal, student and faculty need to learn and teach online, it is now mandated. Thank you, Mr. Rahul. Okay, thank you, thank Burama. You, uh, so you can go to Karafati University, Burama. Uh, start on and next she can come and February, teach us. Yeah? Yeah. yeah, next month is over. Okay, thank you. Next question from Bernardi Ahmed. Okay, Bernard, please, your question. Hello, Mr. Rulahu. Hi, brother. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you, thank you. I am Bernati from Social and Politics Science Faculty. So my question is, how do we respond when some private media say that the handling of COVID-19 is not so good by government? And of course, the data, the show, the data is credible and not uh, some false information. But the official government media say the other ways and deny it. What should we do respond? Thank you. Okay, so you are a political science student. You know a lot of terminology better than any other student who are here. <laughs> so if I say there isn't a data which is showing that my government have not handled pandemic properly, right? So as per a, 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 a ethical way, there is one word called accountability, right? Which I showed you in the presentation. So the best way is that the government should accept the accountability that yes, this is the first time this kind of problem comes in our country. We did some mistake, but we assure you that we are learning and in future we will do our best to solve this kind of problem. Unfortunately, there is no party in the world who accept accountability. Nobody will say that I did mistake and I'm sorry, right? They, what they do, if you tell them you did mistake, they will give you excuse. No, 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 it's not my problem. It is because of them, because of this policy, which is from another you know, country or it is made. So as being a, a responsible politician or a responsible government, accountability is very important. I don't know what kind of law Indonesia is having. The same problem we were facing when in India, people are asking that, okay, we are not happy with your policy. And we don't know what you did. There is no transparency. You are saying that you buy an air jet from US, but why did you buy? How much the price? Did we pay more or did we pay less on discount? I want to know as a, as a student, right? So to bring that accountability and transparency, the Indian government pushed to bring a law called RTI, right to information. I'm a student. I want to know my prime minister, why he's traveling 15 times to US and how much money he has invested on, you know, going and coming back from US. 
that's a, that's a very genuine information. So I will write on a paper an application, small amount of fees. And I say, dear prime minister, I want to know your expenses while you are going in US. Now it is mandatory for a prime minister office to share me this information, what I ask. And they cannot lie because that's going to be checked by the, the Supreme Court or the High Court of a country. That the information shared by the government to the local people should be correct, right? So that's why now the Indian government is slightly afraid to do mistakes because they know people will ask. And if the people will ask, they will put that data into social media. And that's the way they lose election, right? So we need some form of law in the country which makes government afraid and accountable same time, right? Because the government, uh, what is this government? Government are people, right? Who are these people? Like us. So tomorrow, maybe I become the prime minister of India. I can do mistake. I am a human being, right? The only thing which I want, if I do mistake, I say, okay, Bernard, I'm sorry. I did mistake. I will not do it again. And you will feel happy, right? Okay. He accepts his mistake. But if you come and say, Mr. Rahul, you did mistake. I said, no, I did not do mistake. It's your mistake. And there is a fight. So what we need to do? Accountability. Accept it and learn from mistakes. And there should be a one strong law which push government and public administration to share right information to each and every people of a country, like India is having RTI. Are you happy? happy yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. As a student of uh, political science, you can uh, try to uh, do in your small environment first, then not. Uh, yeah, so, Bernard, exactly. I want you, you can mm -hmm. think about uh, vaccine diplomacy because you are a political mm -hmm. science student. Yeah. Think about this, how this uh, vaccine diplomacy actually working in all over the world. How is playing uh. the game in the world? Think about it and uh, sometime when we have time, we will discuss about it. I'm on okay, it. Thank I'm you, on Bernard. Okay, next question from also political and so uh, social science faculty. Mr. Ali Jaina. Okay, the time is yours. Okay, hello. Hello, Professor. Hello, Professor Ali. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ali, public from administrative public study program. I want to ask how if how if we don't have the Governments with trans transparency in the public police. Okay, I say again. No, no, I understood really your question, but that's that's you know it's as being in a political science professor, it's a very contradictory question to answer, right? Because it's related with the, in the yeah. yeah, it's in the democracy, Professor Ali. You must be agree agree, agree with me that uh, in the democracy, the government is by the people, from the people, and to the people. That means the public administration is going to be choose by the local people, right? And the local people are going to be a public administration, and the law is for the local people. That is a preamble, actually. So if the local people who are elected by the local people are not doing their job, so in that case, they, that local people needs to change. Right. That's what simple uh, definition is saying. If Professor Ali gave me some work, right, and say that Mr. Rahul is going to do this job, after three, four days, Professor Ali feel that Mr. Rahul is not able to do his job properly. So it's it's very makes sense. Professor Ali will say to me that okay, Rahul, you are not able to do it. I will send somebody else. You should come back. Right. So, but the government don't work like this, especially. It's a very complicated process of political system. So uh, if the government is not doing their duty, I think the best way that there are certain, uh, you know, a process which you can request information from the government and push them to share the, you know, 
that's what I say. I don't know whether Indonesia have any law, but the local people or the people of Hukum, if I'm pronouncing it right, the law people have to come up with some form of new uh, law under that which the government have an obligation to share their information with the local people. Because, Professor Ali, you are from political science. There are students who are listening to me. They are from medical background. Uh, they may be from other department. They don't understand politics. Right? So if you're going to tell them about uh, political things, they may feel confused. So there should be a law which share information in that way that the medical student can understand the political concept and they can raise their questions and they can get answer from the public administration. So that's a big complicated thing. Uh, again, going on that same side, if there is no accountability, then that means the, corrupt, the government is corrupt. So there should be an accountability everywhere in the government that whatever they are doing or not doing, they have to answer to the public. Are you happy, Ari, with Mr. Yes. Rahul answer? Okay, thank you. Okay, and the last question from Edwin Prastiwi. Okay, Edwin, the time is here. Antar Baba, kenapa? Otra ada, Antar Baba. Thank you, Ms. Kita and hello, Ms. Rahul. Good to hear you again, Edwin. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me introduce myself properly. I'm Edwina Prastiwi, second year student from Economy Faculty. And for the question, I'm interested in the explanation about challenge people to sharing solution. It is so great because it is a, like directly made people in involved to solving the problem. The question is how the government do it. Uh, I mean, what media and mechanism they use and there is any winner that the proposal or solution been implemented by government. Thank you. I mean, I, I personally believe that that's a perfect uh, way to solve the problem at Bina. In Indian government, we have, I think your question is that there isn't a solution from the people to no, the government no. and... No, I'm sorry. Like yeah. you said that there is a like challenge for, peop for people to give solution to about pandemic, etc. Is there, and the, the government give like one luck for the winner? Is yes. there any winner right now and the solution been implemented by government like this? Yes, there are, but unfortunately, I don't have a data right now with me. So there isn't a website of India. It's an Indian government website where there are a lot of proposal already submitted and there's a name of a people whose solution government of India has opted. Uh, for example, if I'm correct, uh, there are there is one organization who give a proposal, especially for uh, solution of these vaccine challenges, and they want that. So what happened? Like you have some idea. You say that Indonesian government is facing some problem. I have an, an idea for this problem. So that problem needs idea needs to submit online to the ministry. The ministry people will read it. If they find it interesting, they will call you and they will say that give us more detail that how you want to do. So you will give a complete proposal like you give to in your study that this is a way we should do. This is that. And that's the way they choose you. They give you not only the money, but sometimes they put your name and photograph while they launch that scheme to that. So uh, there are a couple of schemes which I told you in that presentation like... Uh, uh, a scheme run uh, which is for the old people and widow, the woman who is not having husband and they are poor. So during the COVID time, they don't have anything to survive their family. So there is a scheme where 
uh, that one of the university student give an advice to the ministry that if we have a people like this in the country, we do give them a chance to make a homemade food and giving to the old people who cannot cook. Right. So it's in a business idea which give them to the lady. So that lady is going to make a homemade healthy food for the old people of another place. And it was delivered by the government. So the government like that idea because first it brings a business to the people who are not having job and at the same time bringing food for the old people which is healthy and fresh. So that's a way small small idea which can give some form of motivation among the society was promoted by Indian government and it's actually executed because still there are a lot of women are making home based food and giving to not only to the old people but to the hospital like I am sick I I am out of my home there is nobody with me I fall sick and I am in hospital I don't want to eat hospital food so I will call that lady and say that every day you can send food for me in hospital and you know that's the way the business happened and the same time it is support to me because nobody in hospital with me to give me food. So government like that kind of idea and they, they give money to that student, right? One lakh and they promote that idea all over the India. So I'm sure Indonesian government also have these kind of facilities. But because we are facing the problem, so only we know what is the solution, right? You are in Indonesia, I cannot give you solution from India because I don't know your problem. So if you are facing problem, you have solution, tell to your government that this is the problem and this is my solution. Please use this solution to solve this problem. That is the best way to go ahead. Thank you, Edwin. I hope you have some ideas. That's why you are asking. You can give it to me also. No worries. I will take. I cannot give you one lakh, but I can invite you in India for one week. Are you happy, Edwin, with Mr. Rahul answer? Okay, thank yes. you. Okay, thank you. And no question anymore, Mr. Rahul, from uh, the participant. But we got a lot of information today. Thank you very much, Mr. Rahul, for your nice presentation. So we know about the government of India, how to solve the problem, how to communicate with the government. And maybe uh, it is good for Indonesia uh, to imitate uh, some steps, some solution uh, that we have faced. The same problem, yeah. Maybe we it is a good idea for Indonesian government uh, to solve the problem of uh, during pandemic, especially as for uh, the teacher, yeah. Uh, because there are many students uh, learn, uh, got uh, learning loss, and uh, actually we have the same problem in between India and Indonesia. But uh, we hope uh, we pray together that our pandemic will go far away so uh, as soon as possible, and we can do. Uh, the normal activity like you saw. Okay, before we close our expert lecture today, uh, please, dear Mr. Seno, uh, can you take a picture for documentation for uh, our activity today? Yes, I am have, ready. Yeah, okay. We have uh, about 200 participants, yeah, so you may uh, click the picture many times, okay. Uh, can you contact Mr. Seno? Okay. Okay. Everybody ready? ready. ready. One, two, three, smile. Next slide. Okay, the second view is ready. And one, two, three, smile. Okay enough uh, on the third okay one two three wait 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 okay enough Finish, Mr. Sena? Yes. Okay, thank you, uh, dear all participants. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rahul, for your very nice presentation. Uh, some of my students uh, follow your activity in by YouTube because they are 
stay uh, in the remote area in Papua, so you, uh, they can join with the Zoom, but they, they are very interested to join this program. Thank you for all participants. Jennifer Rahul, have a nice day, and uh, wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank bye you. Bye. Terima kasih. Uh, don't forget to fill the attendance at the room chat in Zoom. S1 Agroteknologi dan S1 Agribisnis Fakultas Ekonomi Program Studi S1 Ekonomi Pembangunan S1 Manajemen dan S2 Manajemen Fakultas Teknik Program Studi S1 Teknik Sipil dan S1 Teknik Industri Fakultas Ilmu Kesehatan Program Studi D3 Kebidanan D4 Kebidanan S1 Kebidanan Pendidikan Profesi Bidan, S1 Keperawatan, Pendidikan Profesi Nurse, S1 Farmasi, D4 Teknik Laboratorium Medis, D3 Teknik Elektromedis, dan Pendidikan Profesi Apoteker. Pendaftaran. Ketik link http titik dua double slash pendaftaran dot unik strap kediri dot ac dot id slash. Tata cara pendaftaran. Setelah terbuka halaman awal pendaftaran, lalu pilih daftar atau daftar kesehatan untuk Fakultas Ilmu Kesehatan. Masukkan data diri anda. Login dengan menggunakan NIK dan password yang Anda masukkan. Halaman dashboard setelah login, lalu bayar biaya pendaftaran menggunakan nomor virtual account yang didapatkan. Jika sudah, akan mendapatkan nomor pendaftaran dan bisa melakukan tes online pada tautan yang ada di dashboard. Jika dinyatakan diterima, kemudian upload dokumen yang dibutuhkan. Kemudian, bayar tagihan registrasi dengan nomor virtual account yang diperoleh. Registrasi mahasiswa baru untuk mendapatkan NIM. Isi data diri dengan benar dan lengkap sesuai dengan isian yang diminta. Universitas Kadiri memiliki empat jalur pendaftaran. Jalur prestasi Untuk calon mahasiswa yang lulus pada dua tahun terakhir atau bebas tes, dengan mengunggah prestasi minimal di tingkat regional atau menggunakan nilai rata-rata rapot 8 sampai 10. Jalur KIPK. Jalur KIPK merupakan beasiswa untuk calon mahasiswa yang kurang mampu dan memiliki kemampuan akademik dan telah terdaftar di laman kip-kuliah.kemendikbud.go.id. Jalur reguler. Jalur reguler untuk semua calon mahasiswa baru lulusan SMA atau sederajat yang mendaftar di Universitas Kadiri. Dan jalur transfer. Jalur transfer untuk mahasiswa pindahan atau alih jenjang atau lintas jalur di semua angkatan. Universitas Kadiri juga memiliki beragam fasilitas seperti gedung olahraga Surya Kediri yang digunakan para mahasiswa untuk kegiatan olahraga. Dalam Gor Surya Universitas Kadiri juga dilengkapi fasilitas olahraga seperti basket, futsal, bulu tangkis, tenis meja, dan fitness center. Musola
perpustakaan yang dilengkapi dengan ratusan buku untuk referensi, sekaligus berbagai hasil penelitian mahasiswa Universitas Kadiri. Laboratorium komputer dengan berbagai alat yang memadai, dengan kapasitas 50 orang mahasiswa. Laboratorium bahasa yang dilengkapi dengan fasilitas full internet, dengan kapasitas 50 orang mahasiswa. Galeri investasi merupakan sarana untuk pembelajaran dan diskusi bersama tentang pasar modal. Laboratorium sipil dan laboratorium industri. Greenhouse dan laboratorium pertanian. Peradilan semu. Laboratorium farmasi. Ruang micro teaching. Dan aula sebagai sarana kegiatan para mahasiswa. Universitas Kadiri juga memiliki beragam prestasi. Antara lain, klasterisasi perguruan tinggi urutan 48 pada kelas terempat, SIM Katmawa peringkat 102 nasional. Universitas Kadiri juga memiliki beragam unit kegiatan mahasiswa atau UKM yang berprestasi. Antara lain, UKM Kerohanian Islam, juara 3 Tilawah Quran 2019, UKM Olahraga Futsal, Juara satu futsal antar mahasiswa sejawa Timur, mahasiswa berprestasi nasional, juara satu pekan olahraga mahasiswa nasional 2019, mahasiswa berprestasi internasional, juara satu tenis meja internasional, UKM seni menyanyi, juara dua nasional, dan galeri investasi memperoleh prestasi juara satu banking and finance festival. Mari bergabung bersama Universitas Kadiri untuk mewujudkan cita-cita Anda. Kadiri University is a private university located in Kediri East Java, Indonesia. It is located in the west of Kediri, near with Selamangren Cave and Airlangga Museum. The location is also near with Matkumambang Hills, make the Kadiri University be a comfortable place for studying and learning. Kadiri University has big contribution of Kediri development. It said by Sudanjo Supriyadi Wali Songo Kediri Foundation since 1980. Kadiri University has passed many bachelor to fulfill the society needs in Kadiri especially and in Indonesia commonly. The graduates of Kadiri University have gotten a job in many cities and countries all over the world. Creating the competence superior, characterless, to be able to compete internationally in 2026 is the vision of Kadiri University. It is also supported by all faculties in Kadiri University. Kadiri University has academic, profession, and vocational education, namely Law Faculty, Social and Politic Faculty, Agriculture Faculty, Economic Faculty, Engineering Faculty, Science Faculty By using student standard learning, Kadir University supported by the good quality of lecturer to get a good cognitive, 
effective and psychomotoric graduation to be able to compete in globalization era. Kadiri University has academic and non-academic facilities such as library, computer center, language center, ASEAN study center, sport stadium, infestation gallery, mini hospital, and job placement center to make the student easier to get the job. Mari bergabung bersama kami di Universitas Kadiri.